I know people don't have a memory anymore. I know people tend to have amnesia, especially when it comes to the Las Vegas Raiders. But we cannot blame the failure of this season solely on Derek Carr. Josh McDaniels has called several questionable plays throughout the entire season and has put Derek Carr in horrible positions to close out these games. Josh McDaniels currently has the record in blowing leads. He is 1-5 when leading by 7 or more points at halftime, and that is the current record in the entire NFL. He has a predictable offense based on the play calling when lined up with two tight ends or when lined up with three wide receivers. The defense almost always knows what's coming. And on top of that, Derek Carr has his lowest passer rating in the second half out of every single play caller he's ever had in his nine-year career. Josh McDaniels is the one outlier, and this cannot be ignored. We know Derek Carr had a rough game against the Steelers. We know Derek Carr has not been perfect this year, but we cannot let Josh McDaniels off the hook. And with some of these decisions that we're going to show you in this clip, it almost feels like Josh McDaniels has been trying to make Derek Carr look bad so he can utilize that one year out in Derek Carr's contract, which was established just this past offseason after Josh McDaniels was hired. Make sure you like this video and subscribe and let me know how many subscribers we had when you click that red button. When the Raiders blew their biggest lead in franchise history against the Arizona Cardinals in week two, they were up 20 to zero at halftime and somehow the Raiders let this team come back. And the one of the oddest things was how Josh McDaniels continued to have Derek Carr throw the football in the second half of the game when it felt like you needed just to run the football, milk that clock with the lead, and especially once the game got into overtime, there was a critical situation in which the Raiders could have run the football to win this game. In overtime, after the Cardinals have already possessed the football, all you need is a field goal to win the game. The Raiders are at the Cardinals 39-yard line, and you can see the field goal target line right here. All you need is three more yards to get in Daniel Carlson field goal range, and this is at Allegiant Stadium inside a dome with no weather making this more difficult. And what do the Raiders decide to do on first down? Well, they decide to try to throw it deep to Devontae Adams here, and it ends up incomplete. Carr and Adams were not on the same page on that play. Yes, Carr and Adams were not in sync. They did not execute. However, this decision was just still really odd because all you really needed to do was run the football three times here, and you will get that field goal and win this game with Daniel Carlson. And on second down after that incompletion, the Raiders don't even have the threat of running the football. The Raiders don't even have a running back on the field here. This means the defense knows exactly what's happening. They know the Raiders are throwing the football here, even though this is a situation where you can at least have the threat of running the football. But instead, the Raiders decide to be predictable. They go into an empty set formation and try to throw the football to Hunter Renfro here. And yes, it is a lower pass to Hunter Renfro, and Hunter Renfro still is able to make the reception, but then is not able to hold on to it. Gets cracked and fumbles the football, and the Cardinals win the game. And yes, this is a scenario where the players did not execute, but this is also a situation where you can't sit here and honestly look at me and tell me that Josh McDaniels called the right plays here. You can't sit here and tell me we should not have run the football three times in this situation or at least do some play action. Have a running back in the backfield on second down in this moment so the defense at least has to be guessing. They can't just already know you're for sure throwing the football. The first game of the year was rough for Derek Carr throwing multiple interceptions but we did learn after that game that Derek Carr's throws are predetermined by Josh McDaniels. He does not have much freedom as to where he can go with the football and that is why you saw a lot of forced passes in double coverage in that game but the Raiders still had a chance to win it and Josh McDaniels called some ridiculous plays in key situations when the Raiders are moving down the field late in the third quarter and we need a touchdown we need to score what does Josh McDaniels do when the Raiders are at the red zone he calls this ridiculous play with Hunter Renfro at running back Brandon Bolden at fullback what the hell and then he's gonna go ahead and have uh, not not Derek Carr throw the football when we're in the red zone and we desperately need a touchdown. He's going to have Devontae Adams try to throw the football here and it ends up in a complete disaster as Darren Waller and Derek Carr are kind of trying to double team Joey Bosa here and it ends up in a sack. And on top of that throughout the game you just had the Raiders try to set up long passes and this ended with Derek Carr being sacked because the offensive line gave him no time but it's just calls like this that left fans scratching their head. And again the Titans. This game was not as close, but the Raiders had so many opportunities in the red zone that
that were just blown. Here is a great example where it is third and two. You only need two yards to get a first down. You are inside the five yard line. But what does Josh McDaniels and the Raiders decide to do? Well, they're also going to be in an empty set formation here with no running back in the backfield. So the defense knows for sure you're throwing the football. The defense knows for sure there is no threat at all of Josh Jacobs running the football two yards to get the first down. And on top of that, this play call is ridiculous. Derek Carr is rolling out, which makes the field smaller that he can throw to. He's no longer going to throw to this other whole entire half of the field. And, and couple this with the fact that the routes were not run correctly. Devontae Adams was not able to beat the press man coverage in this moment. And you had Waller and Devontae Adams in the exact same place during this play. And we've seen this a lot with the Raiders this year. You can go through and look through all the games and there's countless times where we have receivers running into each other. Receivers trying to grab the football even though the guy behind him is trying to catch it. You had that with Waller and Devontae the other day. And this to me was just another example of a play call that just does not make much sense to me. And by the way, for all of you who say that Derek Carr could just audible and change the play and, and do whatever he wants and face no consequences, you're completely delusional. Obviously, he's got to listen to his boss, bro. He can't just be changing every single play or else Josh McDaniels will want to release him anymore because like Mark Davis says, Josh McDaniels is going to be the coach for years to come. The Jaguars game was another confusing game for Raiders fans. In this game, Devontae Adams was completely going off, close to 150 yards and two touchdowns in just the first half only. But in the second half, the dude had zero yards, and even after the game, Devontae Adams could not help himself, and he talked about the fact that the Raiders went away from what was working in the second half. I think that, you know, the, the way we were attacking in the first half was, it was working to a certain extent. You know, obviously, like I said before, we could, we could be better, but it was working, and I feel like we got away from that, and you know, started playing the game a little different. And that, that that's not the way we got to do it. And this was a close game, a one possession game. And Devontae Adams is implying here that things would have been different if the play calling would have been different in the second half. And in the first half, Derek Carr and Devontae had proved that they could make certain plays. Why not try it again? The Rams game was the oddest game because it was not only Josh McDaniels who made some weird decisions, but you also have Patrick Graham. You have Dan Orlosvi of ESPN laughing at the Raiders for being in single press man coverage at the end of the game to allow Baker to win. And even Baker Mayfield had some laughs about it. Yeah, to be honest with you, I was completely shocked that they lined up in press coverage with 15 seconds. I think that, I mean, Sherm, Sherm, Sherm was a little aggravated. But what was even more odd was some of Josh McDaniels' play calling throughout this game. Josh Jacobs had injured his pinky during the game and was looking like he was in visible pain. So what does genius Josh do? He decides to have this play to Jacobs where Jacobs is supposed to throw a pass. And this play breaks down and Jacobs is able to improvise and salvage a few yards. But even Paul Gutierrez at ESPN was saying that this was kind of odd. It looks like it was supposed to be a pass play. And that really doesn't seem like the right idea when Jacobs is having an injury on his hand. And on top of that, when the Raiders really needed a score to make this a two possession game, make it so the Rams could not come back to win it. Josh McDaniels calls three runs in a row. And this is a Rams defense that is great against the run. And on top of that, in this game, you saw Derek Carr have his fewest pass attempts in his career when healthy. The only time he has had fewer pass attempts in a game throughout his career besides this game against the Rams is when he's been injured during the game and had to be taken out. So Josh McDaniels broke a record here, giving Derek Carr his fewest passing attempts and having Josh Jacobs run into a wall against the Rams, a great Rams defense. And on the final play, that was like a nail in the coffin for the Raiders offense on third and one. You got to get a first down. You could milk the clock and win the game if you get this first down. Otherwise, you got to punt it and then you give the Rams another shot to go ahead and win this game. Josh McDaniels calls another weird formation. It is Devontae Adams at running back and Jacobs at fullback. Everybody knows what is going to happen on this play. You're going to do a fullback dive with Jacobs on third and one and it gets stuffed immediately and the Raiders have to punt. And so McDaniels runs Jacobs into the ground against the Rams when it makes no sense and he refuses to run with Jacobs against the Steelers when it makes more sense. Derek Carr was throwing the football constantly in the second coldest game 
ever in Pittsburgh. And no, Kenny Pickett was not airing it out deeper than Derek Carr. They were calling tons of short passing plays with the Steelers. Meanwhile, the Raiders were calling deep passing plays. Kenny Pickett only had one passing attempt over 20 yards in the game against the Raiders. Meanwhile, Derek Carr had four passing attempts over 20 yards against the Steelers. But even Josh Jacobs criticized the play calling, criticized the fact that they were not running the ball with the number one running back in the NFL in a cold weather game. To win these games, you know, especially at the long, at, at the end of the stretch, especially when you up, you know, against a team like this in the cold, you got to run the ball. So, I mean, that's that's a factor on everybody involved um, from top to bottom. So all in all, I say all this not to say that Derek Carr is perfect. Derek Carr has had his struggles this year, but I do feel like with that one year out in the contract, Josh McDaniels never really believed in Derek Carr. And it's odd how the Raiders coaching staff never really seems that upset about losing. And perhaps Josh McDaniels has always had his sights on a new quarterback, which is why he has not set up Derek Carr for success this year. Meanwhile, Derek Carr still has had opportunities to make some big throws in key situations. And if he would have executed at a higher level this year, he would be able to make it more clear and obvious to some people that it is all on Josh McDaniels. But unfortunately, it just seems like the relationship between Derek Carr and Josh McDaniels is just not going to work out in my opinion. But it will be interesting to see if Josh McDaniels does get his own quarterback. Will we see more of these weird play calls? Will we see these wide receiver pass attempts? Will we see these running back pass attempts? Will we see Devontae Adams and Hunter Renfro lined up at running back? Or will Josh McDaniels start calling some more normal plays once he gets his guy? Either way, time will tell on what the decision will be with Derek Carr and the Raiders. The question is, will they bench him these last two weeks to avoid an injury to avoid his contract becoming fully guaranteed? We will be keeping our eyes and ears open to this news, so make sure you hit that red subscribe button for more Raiders content. My name is Wi-Fi Willie. Peace out, and I hope you have a good one.